Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mosaic Church Online. We are so glad that you decided to spend part of your morning here with us. This morning, our preaching pastor from North Point Community Church in Atlanta, Andy Stanley, will give us a message on how to make better decisions with fewer regrets. But before that, let us all worship together this morning. OJ and the band, take it away. Cause I know you make a way I don't always understand I don't always get to see But I will believe it Yes, I will believe it Cause you make mountains move You make giants fall You use songs of praise To shake free and walls I will speak to my fear I will preach to my doubt You were faithful then You'll be faithful now Hey, welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a thought-provoking discussion following our first session, and hopefully you had a chance to do some preparation for this session. So let's jump in, and let's jump in with a really uncomfortable thought. The easiest person to deceive, the easiest person to deceive is the person in the mirror. Now, it shouldn't be that way, but it is. 
And we're gonna talk about why in just a minute. But for the moment, I want you to let that sink in. Actually, allow me to rub it in. You have talked yourself into, you have deceived yourself into, you have sold yourself on every bad decision you've ever made. You were there for all of them. You have done more to undermine your own success and progress than anyone else on the planet. Now, granted, uh, there were outside pressures. Uh, there were other voices involved, uh, people promising you stuff, right? But in the end, you decided. And the reason I know so much about you is I know so much about me. I am equally guilty. So what's wrong with us? I mean, self-leadership, again, it shouldn't be this way, but self-leadership is the greatest leadership challenge that any of us will ever face. And we'll, we'll never be leaders worth following if we don't lead ourselves well. If you have children, uh, you know that your self-leadership <laughs> is impacting some other selves, right? I mean, consider this. Whether or not you want to be like your parents depends upon what they required of themselves, not what they required of you. The way they led themselves determined how you view themselves, right? And the way we lead ourselves will determine whether or not our children want to be like us or even with us. So this is a really big deal, but here's the challenge. And uh, this will set us up for our first of our five questions. You can't lead yourself if you're lying to yourself. You can't lead yourself well if you're lying to yourself. Um, have you ever tried to lead a liar? It's, uh, it's pretty much impossible, right? In fact, in professional settings, what do you do? In professional settings, you fire a liar. So in this session, I'm gonna challenge you to fire the dishonest version of you and hire a new you, an honest you, um, a you that will always tell you the truth even when it makes you feel bad about you. Besides, if you lie to yourself, you'll eventually lie to somebody else. In fact, um, you may hate me for saying this, um, if you have a hard time telling other people the truth when the truth makes you look bad, you're probably not being honest with yourself either. As you know, dishonesty erodes credibility. And in a similar way, when we are dishonest with ourselves, it erodes credibility within ourselves, which sounds strange, I know, but think about it. When we lie out loud to somebody else, what's the first thing we do on the inside? What's the first thing we do in our heads? We justify the lie. To who? <laughs> to ourselves. We have to, otherwise we're at odds with ourselves, something us sane people can't maintain for very long. So what do we do? We create a narrative that justifies our lie or our half-truth, and then we choose to believe it. It's crazy. And why would you, or why would we believe in a narrative that we created? Well, we answered that in session one. You're a sucker for you. You can convince yourself of just about anything. And so can I. Author and professor Erin Brown defines a false narrative as this, and this is so helpful. She says it's a plastic truth, a plastic truth. She goes on to say this, um, what, what we've said so many times in our heads, it ultimately becomes a plastic truth. And over time, um, it takes the parts and the pieces that we've kind of made up and brought together, and we cement it in the gaps between what we know to be true, and before long, we have a brand new narrative that has nothing to do with what's actually true. False narratives become our crutch. So, got any false narratives that you carry around? Um, any plastic truths? As my AA and my NA friends remind me, rigorous honesty, rigorous honesty is the first rule to recovery. So tell yourself the truth, even if it makes you feel bad about yourself, because you cannot make the best decision for you until you're honest with you. Besides, if you're not honest about why you're choosing what you're choosing or doing what you're doing, you're gonna have a difficult time taking responsibility for the outcome of those decisions as well, right? And as you know, there's an adjective for people who refuse to take responsibility for their decisions. We call it irresponsible. And when we're dishonest with ourselves, we have a hard time owning up to the outcome of our decisions. And this creates a vicious downward spiral that leaves people broken and confused. So do you wanna be broken and confused? Of course you don't. So come on, root out your false, plastic, mostly true, self-centered narratives and kiss them goodbye. Well, you probably don't wanna kiss them. Anyway, the fact that everything I've said so far is obvious um, doesn't make it easy, does it? In fact, your first step may be being honest with yourself about the fact that you're not always honest 
with yourself. But to decide your way into a better future, to decide your way into a better future, you've got to develop the uncomfortable habit of telling yourself the uncomfortable truth, specifically the uncomfortable truth about why you're choosing to do what you're choosing to do. And this leads us at last to our first of five questions, the integrity question. And the integrity question is this, am I being honest with myself? Am I being honest with myself? You may not owe it to anyone else, but you owe it to yourself to be honest with yourself about why you choose what you choose, why you decide what you decide. There's no win, there is no win in selling yourself. Just tell yourself the truth. In fact, I've found it helps a lot to ask this question twice, but on the second round, it helps to add a word. Am I being honest with myself? Really, (laughs) am I being honest with myself? Really, why am I doing this? Really, why am I avoiding him? Really, why am I postponing this? Really, seriously, why are you postponing this? Why do I keep making the same excuses? Really, why am I going? Really, why did I say yes? Why did I choose to wear this? Really, why did I choose to purchase or lease this? Really, really, why did you choose to purchase or lease this? Why do I drive this? Really, why did I order this? Really, why did I move in? Why did I move out? Really, remember this. When it comes to selling ourselves on a bad idea, we are the best. When it comes to building and arguing a case for why we should do something we know we shouldn't do, we are unassailable litigators, right? So let's stop with all that. Just tell yourself the unfiltered, perhaps embarrassing truth. It may hurt, You may hurt your own feelings, but in the end, it's gonna help. Owning the real why behind the what may cause some lights to come on, and lights are terrifying. Uh, Just ask the roaches and the rats, right? But light is also a disinfectant. Truth is as well. They go hand in hand. So bring your narratives, bring your narratives, your justifications and your excuses into the light. Now, as you know, we come into the world with a natural proclivity for selling ourselves on what we want to do rather than what we ought to do. And here's, here's sort of how that works. Once our hearts get wrapped around something or once our hearts get wrapped around somebody, the heart sends a message to the brain. And the heart says to the brain, hey brain, I want this. So go figure out a way for me to get it and go figure out a way for me to justify getting it. Now, our brains are really smart. Um, that's why we call it a brain, right? And our brains know that while it's difficult to justify a want, it is not so difficult to justify a need. So the first thing your brain does, the first thing my brain does is upgrade the message to something far more sophisticated than something I want. Your brain says, you need this. And once we're convinced we need something, it's pretty much Game over. Before long, we have a list of justifications for buying it, drinking it, staying, leaving, asking it out, asking it in, or whatever. But the reasons we use to sell ourselves, the reasons we use to sell ourselves aren't actually reasons. They're just justification. And justifying is akin to just a lying. We are just a lying to ourselves. And in most instances, we know it. Now, There's a verse in the Old Testament that pretty much summarizes everything I've said, but a whole lot better than how I said it. But to appreciate the weight of this ancient wisdom, you you gotta know a little bit about the context. So here's the context. Around 600 BC, Jeremiah, a Jewish court advisor turned prophet, um, served as an advisor to actually a series of kings in ancient Israel. Kings whose careers would have been way smoother and a lot longer if they had taken Jeremiah's advice. But of course, the point of being a king is you don't have to listen to anyone's advice. So during an interaction with one particularly stubborn king, King Zedekiah, who as it turns out was actually Israel's last king, Jeremiah documents his explanation as to why he thinks we're so prone towards self-deception. And of course, he learned this from watching these kings make terrible, terrible decisions. He explains why we're so good at selling ourselves on bad options, and here's what Jeremiah wrote all those years ago. He wrote, the heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is in every heart, your heart, my heart. The heart is deceitful. Now, 
Jeremiah chose his adjective very carefully. As you know, there's a big difference between being dishonest and being deceitful. Um, dishonest is way easier to spot than deceitful, right? I mean, dishonest is just straight up not honest. But deceitful? Deceitful usually includes a mix of truth, half-truth, and untruth. If our hearts were just straight up dishonest, if our hearts just lied to us, that would be easy to detect. But deceitful? Deceitful is difficult to detect. You've met dishonest people who weren't shrewd enough to deceive you. I mean, their dishonesty was apparent, right? But deceitful people? Those are the dangerous ones. So Jeremiah chose his words carefully. Our hearts are deceitful. They're dangerous. It's why we're so convinced, and at times it's why we're so convincing. We don't merely lie to ourselves. We deceive ourselves. But Jeremiah wasn't finished. He goes on to say this. The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is beyond cure. There's no cure. This is a permanent condition. You don't outgrow it, you don't outmature it, and you can't fix it. It's hardwired. We're doomed. Okay, so we're not doomed, but it is a permanent condition which requires constant supervision. A permanent condition requires proactive response. Otherwise, we'll just deceive ourselves. But Jeremiah's still not finished. He wraps up by stating something well, something we've all experienced. He says this, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure, who can understand it? Now, that's a good question. I certainly don't. Apparently, according to Jeremiah, nobody does, which explains a lot of things. It explains why we've all said at some point, I don't understand why I did what I just did, which is another way of saying, I don't understand why I decided what I just decided. I don't understand why I chose what I just decided chose. It's why we do things that make perfect sense in the moment that make utterly no sense a moment later. It explains, it explains why you do the very thing you tell other people not to do. It's why the person in the mirror is the most difficult person to lead. They just won't tell you the truth unless you force them to. You've got to pin them down, you've got to look them in the eye, and you've got to ask them, why are you doing this really? And the sooner you embrace this uncomfortable, disquieting fact about yourself, the sooner you'll develop and maintain a healthy suspicion about yourself. And the more open you'll be to information and advice that conflicts with, well, where your heart has a tendency to take you. The more cautious you'll be when the salesman inside of you start selling. So this week, I want you to have a heart-to-heart -heart with yourself and have it in the mirror. <laughs> look yourself in the eye, seriously, stand in front of the mirror, look yourself in the eye and say out loud and use your name, Andy, are you being honest with yourself, really? And then tell yourself the truth. Tell yourself the truth even if you don't plan to act on it. You owe it to yourself to know, even if it points you in a direction that you don't intend to go. It's not gonna hurt to know and be curious, this is so important, to help punch through our deceptive selves requires what Brene Brown refers to as emotional curiosity, and this is so important. When we push through our discomfort, when we push through our discomfort and get curious about why we're feeling what we're feeling, uh, why we are determined to do what we're hell-bent on doing, uh, when we finally get to the truth, something happens on the inside, but most people won't do this. So don't be most people. Curiosity, curiosity will keep you focused on the frontiers of your ignorance. And that's where we learn. Uh, that's where we gain insight. And when it's uncomfortable, when you're tempted to turn away and run, that's fear talking, that's insecurity talking. So be curious. If you do, you'll learn something and you'll learn something about yourself. And in the end, you will make better decisions and you will experience fewer regrets. Um, it will probably come as no surprise that Jesus made a powerful statement in this regard as well. Um, you're actually familiar with this statement, um, not because Jesus said it, but because politicians quote him all the time. They've been hijacking this statement for decades, of course, without giving Jesus any credit. But here's what Jesus said. He said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Truth really will set you free. But the opposite is true as well. Dishonesty will imprison you. And if we're not careful, 
We imprison ourselves when we are less than honest with ourselves. Telling yourself the truth, telling yourself the truth brings clarity. Um, you'll see better. It'll be harder to deceive yourself. Telling yourself the truth will empower you to make better decisions, the right decision, and thus the first of our five questions. Am I being honest? Am I being honest with myself? Really, am I telling myself the truth or am I selling myself a regret? Now. As we close, I want to ask you a series of questions. Uh, most of these won't have anything to do with your current situation, but perhaps a couple of them will. And these are the kinds of questions we should all get in the habit of asking ourselves. Now, here's the thing. Nobody can read your mind. So um, when I get to a question that does intersect with your current reality, there is no reason for you not to be honest with yourself. In fact, I'll even give you an out. You don't have to do anything with your answer. Just be honest with yourself, really. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Why are you moving, really? Why do you continue to go out with him, really? Why do you continue to go out with her, really? Why did you file for divorce, really? Why did you move in? Why are you leaving? Why are you taking that job, really? What's the real reason you don't call your kids? What's the actual reason you don't call your mom? What's the real reason you don't call your dad, your brother, your sister? It's brutal, isn't it? It's terrifying. It's clarifying. Hopefully, it's liberating and it's empowering. And to help you adopt our first question as part of your decision-making filter, I wanna encourage you to make a decision right now. Now, so you know, I'm gonna conclude each session by asking you to make a decision, but this is the first one. And this first one may be the most important one, and perhaps it will be the most difficult decision to keep. But here's the decision I wanna challenge you to make right now. We call it the integrity decision. I will not lie to myself, even when the truth makes me feel bad about myself. I want you to decide right now, I will not lie to myself, even when the truth makes me feel bad about myself. And here's why. There are worse things than feeling bad about yourself. For starters, clinging to something bad about yourself. Refusing to address what's bad about ourselves is bad for ourselves. So, are you ready to be honest with yourself, even if it makes you feel bad about yourself? You will never get to where you need to be until you acknowledge where you are to begin with. So be honest. After all, Jeremiah was right, wasn't he? The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is beyond cure. It cannot be cured. But now you know, and now you know what to do about it. And now you are better equipped to make better decisions and to live with fewer regrets, which is a good thing because your decisions determine the direction and quality of your life as well as the direction and quality of the lives of the people that you love. We'll pick up the discussion right there next time in session three where we will unpack the legacy question. But now it's your turn to talk. Have a great discussion. Well, thanks for that, Andy. We hope you find today's content very helpful and practical. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our social media accounts so you're in the loop of what's happening in Mosaic for our major announcements and the helpful content we put out every day to help you in your walk with Jesus. And also, we hope to see you on our next in-person service gathering, April 16th, Friday, 11 in the morning at the Fridge Warehouse. As always, we're also here online every Friday morning, 11 o'clock here on YouTube. Tell your friends about it. Have a great rest of the week and God bless everyone.